Oh, hello. Welcome back to Dolly Crafter. Today's video is one that's been in the works for quite some time. Can any of you guess what it is? A drag tutorial! <clears throat> yeah. Back when I made my first video here on YouTube, I got a lot of questions on how I made these dreads for jewels. I had asked if any of you were interested in a tutorial and you were. So I figured now would be the perfect time to walk you through the steps that I took to create the dreads from my very first video. So let's go grab our materials and make some doll dreads. You're going to want to grab a piece of paper and a pen to jot down the following materials. First, you're going to need two pans, one for boiling hot water and one for ice cold water, one spray bottle, organic olive oil soap, an absorbent surface like a towel or a dish mat, an exfoliating sponge or a sponge with a rough side, one spoon, ideally something like this that can grab onto the dreads when they're in the boiling water, but it doesn't have to be exactly this. I'll be using a wooden spoon in this tutorial. You'll also need a pair of scissors to cut the yarn. And then finally, your color choice of acrylic yarn or wool fiber. In this video, I'm going to be using acrylic yarn. But ideally, if you can get your hands on some wool fiber, I would go that route as it will yield the best result. Now, before we get started, I actually have to make a quick run to Hobby Lobby. Hobby Lobby is one of my favorite places to go for supplies. They were actually having a huge sale on all of their yarn, so I figured right now would be the perfect time to stock up. I went a little crazy because of the sale, but I got everything I needed for a while. And the best part is that I found all the perfect colors for today's project. Now that we have our yarn, we can set up our workstation. To begin, I'm going to lay down my absorbent surface. I had an extra dish mat laying around the house, so I just laid that down. On top, you'll notice an unmentioned material, and that's because it's optional. This is my anti-slip mat, and I'll get to why I use it in just a moment. For now, let me introduce you to today's base. This is actually going to be a sister for... Jules! That's right, she's finally getting a sister! But don't get used to this doll in this video. She's only here to demonstrate the next step. You're going to have to wait until the next video to see how she turned out. I'm sorry. I know, I know. Let's just get started. Next step, measuring. When determining your desired length, Make sure to measure from the lowest part of the hairline down to the ideal length for your base. You want to avoid measuring from the top of the hairline to the desired length because once the dreads are made and the doll is rerouted, you're going to end up with dreads that are a lot longer than you intended. It's also important to keep in mind that the process of rolling the dreads adds at least an extra inch to your final product. So whenever you decide your perfect length, you'll want to subtract at least an inch from that measurement. This will ensure that your dreads come out exactly the way you want them to. All right, little dolly, we'll see you in the next video. Once you've decided on how long you want your dreads to be, just double that amount and begin cutting your yarn. I like to have different colors in my dreads, so I mix and match what colors I use for each one to give them that colorful candy look. After I pair up my colors, it's time to start putting these babies together. Now, whether you're working with multiple colors like me or a single color, this step is the same. You're going to take each strand of yarn that you've cut or wool fiber and just start stretching out the fibers. It helps to think of it like spider webs. You know those decorative spider webs that you put up on Halloween in your windows? Like that. You want the fibers that you're using to be as stretched out as possible, so you don't want any big clusters stuck together. For those of you working with multiple colors, you're going to repeat that process for each color that you have. Once you've stretched out one piece, you're going to lay it down on the piece before it and begin blending the colors together by continuing to separate the fibers. I recommend doing this one color at a time to make sure that they're truly entangled with one another. I know this seems like a lot of work, but it really helps when you begin rolling out the dreads later on. So make sure the fibers are evenly blended and matted together as much as possible. Really, really, truly matted. Kind of the opposite of when you're doing your own hair. Now I recommend a maximum of three colors when working with full length pieces like this. Once all of my colors are added, I like to examine each piece to make sure everything is blended evenly. It helps to turn your pieces around. Oftentimes, when you're working with multiple colors like this, 
that first color you laid down will be dominant on one side. When this happens, just repeat the blending process until both sides look similar and don't have obvious clusters of any one color. Don't be afraid to really get in there to achieve this. It's safe to move on to the next step when you can toss it around without any fibers coming loose or separating from the rest. To begin the rolling process, we're going to fill our spray bottle with a few pumps of our organic olive oil soap and warm water. The olive oil soap creates a film barrier around the fibers that keeps them soft and helps protect them from breakage during the reroute process. So you want to coat each dread in a nice even layer. Once your dread is evenly coated, you can then begin to roll. Here I'm trying to demonstrate that you can technically roll these out with your hands, but with this process it helps to have as much friction as possible to get the best result. That's why I use an exfoliating sponge and the anti-slip mat. Again, friction plays a key role in the rolling process because it helps combine all of those loose fibers into their final position. The more friction you have, the tighter your dreads will be. But if you don't have either of these items, you can use a towel as your surface and roll with either your hand, a gloved hand, or a kitchen sponge with a rough side. Now when you're rolling your dreads, you want to roll them in a uniform direction for a smooth result. Lightly spray your dreads if they seem dry, and you should end up with a similar result to this. Now it's time to boil our dreads. As I mentioned when listing materials, you'll need one pot for boiling water and one for cold water. Please make sure you know which is which because if you mix it up, you can really truly hurt yourself. So again, please be careful. In my pot of boiling water, I like to add a few more drops of the olive oil soap. This is completely optional and you don't have to do this. I just like to do it to add a little bit more security for my dreads. Once added, I gently stir it until it creates a light foam, then let it sit for a couple of minutes before adding my dreads. Now using your stirring spoon, gently add your dread to the hot water. Let it soak for a moment before lightly stirring it. The hot water is important because it almost shrinks the fibers and aids in the efforts to secure them in their final place. It's normal for the dread to look a tad undone, but don't worry. We repeat this whole process until we're satisfied. Next, place it into the cold water. Let soak and gently stir for about 30 seconds. Then remove it from the pot, wring out any excess water, and then place it onto your rolling surface. If you're not completely satisfied, Start rolling again and repeat these steps until you are. I typically repeat these steps about three times to get my desired look. And if when you're done you notice any linted areas, you can gently just pull them off. And that's it. Now you know how I make my candy dreads for all of my dolls. I hope you found this tutorial helpful, and if you end up making some of your own, please either tag me on Instagram or comment below. I would love to see what you create. Also, don't forget, Jules here is going to be receiving a very special visit from her sister in the next video. So till then, bye bye Let me turn around, let me turn around first. <laughs> How the heck you turn? Dolly! <laughs> Grab the wheel, Dolly! Oh no! <laughs> this is hard! Ready? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, let me do it. Let me do it in your course. <laughs>